Vader Chas friends, it finally happened. Stockfish finally did it. Today we'll see the Stockfish engine battling it out in one of the sharpest openings that you can play. Today the Stockfish engine will pull off the forgotten opening from the Romantic era. Today we'll see the fish battling it out in the Evans Gambit of the Italian game. And its opponent was Coivisto, I think also a respectful, a strong opponent. But what the fish was doing here against its opponent in the Evans Gambit was really crazy how Stockfish activated pieces, played two rooklifts all over the board, activated the bishop here all over the board, and then created wild tactics. In my opinion, really one of the best chess games that I've seen in my life. So, as I always like to say, put your seatbelts on and enjoy in this sharp, sharp tactical battle between Stockfish and Coivisto in the Evans Gambit. So, Stockfish with the white pieces, open with the move e4. We have e5, after a couple more moves, we have the Italian game, and now Stockfish pulls off, of course, the impossible move, the beautiful Evans Gambit. Really, really wild stuff. So after move bishop to b4, we have now the move c3, bishop drops back, and now the most dynamic variation is of course to play the move d4, and now there are some tactical possibilities with queen to b3 and also activating the knight further in the attack. So we have uh, e takes d4, we have queen to b3, hitting the pawn on f7 immediately, you have to protect it, and now kingside castling here played by Stockfish. And here in the game we have bishop to b6, uh, supporting simply uh, the progress here around the square d4, Stockfish takes out now the pawn on d4 we have now knight to d4 after knight takes d4 bishop to d4 now stockfish plays an interesting move knight to c3 and the problem for black always in these types of positions is that you cannot immediately go for the e4 pawn this e4 pawn is weak in the beginning but if you do it of course queen to c3 is going to happen uh if you play queen to e4 then of course rook to e1 is winning the game if you play queen to e uh, queen to f6 then e5 is going to happen so um, I would not recommend, of course, this particular line you now for black. So, after move knight to c3, we have knight to f6, putting more pressure against the pawn on e4, but now Stockfish plays the amazing bishop to a3, forcing now black to play down the move d6, and now rook to d1, hitting the bishop, and now already, already many things can go wrong. If black doesn't react correctly the game could be over very very soon for instance one of the mistakes that black can make for sure is the move bishop to b6 if that happens the game is i think already already over because we'll play simply e5 hitting the center immediately whatever you do i think you face many problems for instance queen to e5 uh, will be met with rook to e1 game over for black the same thing happens of course after d takes e5 lose the queen so you have to go maybe with your knight somewhere but now look at this we'll play simply e takes d6 you have to react c takes d6 but now rook to e1 you can cover but of course bishop to d6 is devastating the game is over again here for black it's not working you can of course also here play bishop to e5 after the attack by the rook but still it doesn't get better we'll play simply f4 uh, bishop to c3 you can play queen to c3 you can maybe even hit the pawn here on e4 but now after queen to g7 many many tactical problems already in uh, black's position for instance you play queen to f6 queen to f6 knight to f6 bishop to b2 you can maybe protect it but now look at this rook to e1 you cover uh, f5 is going to happen so as i said really too many too many uh, tactical options here uh, here for white so after move rook from a to d1 we have now bishop to c3 immediately uh, here by Coivisto, now comes queen to c3, and again, I'm pointing out knight to e4 is simply not working because of the same tactical sequence, will simply activate the piece, again, rook to e1, bishop to e6 again, but f4, f5 is going to happen, so it's game over for black. After move queen to c3, that's why queen to e5 was played by Coivisto, hoping, of course, to simplify the game by trading off the queens because okay black is up in material and is hoping to get a simplified game for sure but stockfish is of course not allowing it plays very actively now with the pieces and again knight to e4 is not good because of some tactics on the e file f3 could happen so uh, bishop to b2 also a very dangerous move so again too many too many options here for white after move queen to c1 that's why kingside casting was played by coivisto but now bishop to b2 again a very active move forcing now black to react if you play queen to e4 and this was also maybe even one of the good continuations here for black but still i'm not sure like it's bishop to f6 g takes f6 then bishop to d5 you hit the queen the queen has to drop back somewhere and then you play rooklets so i'm rook to d3 rook to g3 uh, is of course an interesting path also queen to c3 
hitting the weak pawn on e5 is also an opportunity if you stay maybe somehow here on on the e file will activate simply another rook rook to e1 is going to happen then we can play with both of our rooks here so i think the attack would be also very devastating here against the black uh, king side because the pawn structure is already messed up we have provoked many weaknesses in black's camp so that's why from bishop to b2 uh, here uh Coivisto didn't dare to take out now the pawn on e4 played simply a retreating move with the queen to e7 but now again we have uh, have the same motif we have the breakthrough motif with the move e5 and the problem is now if you play d takes e5 you get this one bishop to h3 we hit the queen and also the rook but it's also maybe playable because black gained uh, enough pawns uh, as a compensation for the lost exchange maybe this could be also playable but after move e5 the coivisto engine decided to retreat now with the uh, knight on e8 we have now a rook from f to e1 simply including a new attacker into the game look at this uh both rooks on very active files bishops very active here the queen ready to get into the game this is really sick brutal attacking formation here i would not love to play now this game from black's perspective although you're up in material but basically it's hard for black to use somehow the pawn majority that black has here black has of course an advantage here but if you start to push just some pawns here it's simply too slow meanwhile white is keep is keeping the attack against your king here so as i said you have to first defend maybe even force a couple of trades of pieces maybe even force a trades of queens when that happens i think then black could have a solid game so in the game uh, we have bishop to e6 of course stockfish plays now e takes d6 it's not allowing the bishops to be traded because the queen is hanging on the e file so we have knight to d6 bishop to b3 we have queen to d d8 again now coivisto is finally threatening uh, to trade off the pieces but stockfish plays bishop to a4 gets out of the attack we have bishop to f5 rook to e5 and from this point on i knew that this is going to be brutal this is going to be sick brutal chats when stockfish plays such an attack when stockfish plays such an amazing rook lift and here Coivisto played i think a decent line played bishop to g6 got simply a new defender in front of the king because we had to say here the black king doesn't have so many good defensive options so bishop to place the bishop in front of the king was i think a good idea but now stockfish will show a very very cool attacking idea so first of all bishop to b3 getting the bishop again on the most active uh, diagonal so we have king to h8 uh, we have uh, rook to c5 putting the pressure against the pawn on c7 here coivisto protected now the pawn and now the fun starts stockfish uses now the rook lift in order to make the move h5 in order to kick away the bishop and also keeps the pressure here on the c file so stockfish gets kicked away with the move b6 we have a rook to c3 and now f move a6 by uh, coivisto now comes the most interesting i think idea of the game stockfish plays the amazing h5 and in the beginning it seemed to me that this is crazy why should anyone give up a pawn like this but stockfish is creating now new attacking opportunities after bishop to h5 stockfish sacrificed the new pawn but now creates attacking chances here on the h file rook to h3 hitting the bishop and also what is very important with the move h5 you'll see it in a later state of the game that actually look at this i've um, noticed it here with uh, the green arrow that the king has an escape route so there are no back rank checkmate threats uh, for white so it means that white can play freely with all of this heavy artillery so white can play active with the rook can also play active with the queen so because there are no checkmate threats on the back rank that's also a good part about this pawn sacrifice with the move uh, h5 so in the game after rook to h3 we have queen to uh, bishop to g6 and now look what stockfish had in mind now the queen is coming in a brutal sharp tactical way into the game queen to h6 you cannot of course take because you're getting uh because of the bishop's activity here on the dark square diagonal so we have rook to g8 protecting now uh the pawn on um uh the pawn on g7 you cannot even play f6 here in order to lock this long diagonal because then you get queen to g6 so see how devastating really this attack is how um stockfish keeps the attacking flow how stockfish keeps simply the progress here and uh, creates with simple threats but really brutal ideas for sure so after move queen to h6 so that's why rook to g8 had to be played now we have rook to d5 <laughs> another rook lift here by the fish so when when i saw now this move i thought 
something wild is going to happen for sure these rooks are really really amazing so queen to e7 we have rook to e5 hitting the queen and now the queen comes here on f6 uh, if you play even g takes h6 this is not working of course we will have this one rook takes e7 and then you have to cover yourself with the rook uh, then this other rook is coming into the game even if you play f6 bishop to f6 uh, bishop to g7 is going to happen in one particular moment maybe also this could be somehow defendable in i don't know in some human level of chess but in top engine level this is winning for uh white for sure although we'll have to say it. black has gained many pawns in this tactical sequences especially now the game is a little bit more simplified without the queens on the board maybe there are some chances in this position for black to make something but still i would not left to also play now this particular position from black's perspective so after move rook to e5 that's why queen to f6 stockfish retreats now with the queen we have bishop to f5 and now another beautiful move rook to h6 it's really wild stuff if you play now queen to h6 this wasn't played in the game, but look how the fish is creating really madness. Queen to h6 is going to happen immediately. Now after g takes h6, now comes the stunning rook to e8. Uh, you can cover, of course, only with the pawn after bishop to f6. It's a checkmate because you cannot cover with the rook because of this other rook's activity here on the back rank. This would be an amazing, amazing an epic checkmate for sure so after move rook to h6 so that's why the queen had to retreat so you see how with every simple threat stockfish is pushing um uh, black pieces away from the action it simply improves with every uh, move simply its activity so we have queen to f4 getting the queen back into the game we have bishop to b1 we have rook from h, um, uh, e to h5 and now queen to e8 so we have queen to g5 putting more pressure against this pawn on g7 and now f6 we have rook takes f6 by stockfish and now queen to e1 and now you see how important it was to keep this back rank uh, really opened now the uh, king has some breathing spaces and here after move queen to e2 uh, here uh, Coivisto tried to attack this dangerous bishop here on this long battle but now stockfish found another beautiful plan stockfish plays now again rook to f6 the problem is now for black black cannot take out uh here the uh, bishop on b2 because black is not controlling anymore the h5 score because look at this we'll simply play rook to h7 king take uh, bishop to h7 rook takes h7 king to h7 and now queen to h5 is an amazing checkmate so you see uh, with this idea when the queen takes uh the bishop on b2 the queen gets deflected from this very important square on h5 really wild stuff so after move rook to f6 rook to e8 was played by uh Coivisto, but now f3 not allowing maybe this knight somehow or the bishop to come into the game and now after queen to d3 here by uh Coivisto, bishop to d5 and this was it this was basically game over here for uh for black whatever you do it's not working you're getting destroyed especially here on h7 for instance you try something i don't know uh, knight to c8 then bishop to e4 is uh, winning the game because you have to now play something like rook to e4 but now look at this again rook to h7 is simply winning the game you could also try rook to e6 that was actually coivisto's continuation to sacrifice somehow uh, some material back but now after bishop to e6 here coivisto tried to get back into the game but it's not working again again this is the same idea rook to h7 queen to h7 we have bishop to uh f5 we have a beautiful interference tactic after bishop to f5 queen to f5 for instance you can play knight to f6 but now look at this bishop to f6 and after a couple more moves it will be still a checkmate here for white so poo what you say this is sick brutal how stockfish activated activated the pieces how stockfish created again a wild attacking formation in my opinion really an epic game i think the evans gambit is playable if you're of course a tactical beast but it can also go in a different direction if you don't find of course this moves that stockfish will eventually find probably uh, many of us would not find many of these moves for sure so in my opinion it's still a risky choice to play the evans gambit but if you want to pull it off maybe you can use this game as your cornerstone as your preparation then build it up with different opportunities with different sidelines also of course for black's perspective there are other opportunities but still you see uh, the evans gambit can still be played in top engine level maybe it can be again played in 
top GM level. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed it a lot. Really one of the best chess games that I've seen in my life. Uh, if you want to see more brutal attacking games like this, check out our Compton Chess Games Played by Computer series. Here's the link of our playlist. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say? Chess is the best, of course.